start. Um, welcome to the Committee of the Liverpool City Region Command Authority. And just to inform everybody, as we always do at the beginning of the proceedings, that the meeting will be broadcast live to the Command Authority's website and available for subsequent viewing. And by entering this room, you are consenting to be filmed and to the possible use of those images and sound recordings for filming purposes. There you go, what a caveat that is. Um, can members and officers, uh, whenever speaking, uh, ensure that you press the microphone before um, trying to, to speak, um, because otherwise no one will hear you. And finally, can everyone ensure that they switch their phones to silent, please? Before we start the meeting, it is with genuine great sadness that we have heard that the passing of former Sefton Council, Councillor Kevin Klusky. Kevin was the Mayor of Sefton three times and he was a passionate um, advocate about his role on the Merseyside Recycling and Waste Authority. So on behalf of the Command Authority, can I pass on our sincere condolences to um, Kevin's wife, Linda, and the family and friends of Kevin and to all his former great colleagues and many in the political sphere. Um, therefore, can I ask you all to join me in a minute's silence as a sign of our respect. Uh, before we move on to item one, um, I think Councillor Mayor just briefly wanted to um, say something about Kevin. Yeah, th thanks, Jim. Kevin, Kevin Cluskey has been around a long time, longer than a lot of people realise. And on a personal level, you know, when I first joined my, my party in the, in the late 1980s, Kevin was one of the first people who approached me talk to me, and over the years became a mentor to me for, for many years. He, he always had an opinion on everything, um, and it was usually a rather long opinion, which, which, is, which is good. But it, it, it's, it's interest really diverse. You, you mentioned the, the, the Waste Authority and its chairmanship of that. Um, but you know, from, from Mersey Forest, he had a great interest in Mersey Forest. He had great interest in anything environmental. And a really passionate ambassador, both for our borough in his three terms as mayor, but also for not just his own war, but for real life issues for local people. A great stalwart of the party, chair of, of Bootle Constituents Labour Party, a really good chair for many years, and he'd be missed by many of us, yet. Thanks, Ian. Um, and there are officers and politicians in the room who also work very closely with them. I'm sure they can be um, absolutely clear with everything you just said. Item one is for apologies, uh, Trudy. Thank you. I've received apologies from Councillor Hackett, Councillor Bowden, Councillor Hardy, Councillor Sinnott, Gideon Ben Choven, Reverend Canon Loudon, Councillor Nicholas, Mr. Steve Hammond and Councillor Powell. Any further apologies? Mayor Joe Anderson as well. Absolutely, of course. Mayor Joe Anderson. Um, two is declarations of interest. Three is the minutes of the previous meeting of the Combined Authority, which is held on the 24th of May this year, and that included uh, the minutes of that meeting on pages 1 to 14. Can I ask for those to be agreed, please? Thank you. Um, four is um, some mail announcements and updates. and. Um, 
people will remember that on a sort of semi-regular basis I've spoke about the performance of Northern Rail and it's nearly a year on from the disastrous 2018, uh, May 2018 it was, I think, timetable and Northern have consistently failed to show any improvement in that they're able to take the action required to restore the public's confidence to deliver on their legally binding franchise requirements. And since the last meeting of the combined authority, uh, Andy Burnham and myself have called on the Transport Secretary to terminate Northern's rail franchise and appoint what's called an operator of last resort. And, and the sort of failings uh, include um, the failure to deliver a significant and sustained improvement in performance. Anyone who's been on the trains will know this, uh, but nearly a fifth of all services arriving late, 28,000 28, services cancelled, and a huge increase in services being something called short form. That's in other words, when you're supposed to get three carriages and it comes up with two. So whilst performance-wise um, the train has turned up, people can't actually get on and off the train, so it might as well not be there. Um, on a Sunday before um, our announcement, there were 165 <coughs> unplanned cancellations on top of the 90 planned cancellations in one day. Uh, and basically the Traveller Public have had enough. Our post bag is um, myself and, and Liam uh, Robinson. We're constantly asked what we're doing about it. It's outside of the purview of this authority of the Metro Mayor, but we've, um, as the representatives of this combined authority on Transport for the North, we've now asked for that franchise to be terminated. Um, and the Secretary of State is the person who can act to restore the trust in the public and deliver a rail network that's finally fit for passengers, and we've asked him to do so. So we'll keep you. Um, updated on any developments on that. Um, at the opposite end of the emotional scale, um, yesterday the Centre for Local Economic Strategies, or CLES as most people will know them, held their National Community Wellbuilding Summit in the city region. It was organised um, primarily by Wirral Council, um, but it had attendance from everywhere. It was a great opportunity to meet with global leaders from this movement, I mean, they use that now, they say this is an actual movement, it's not a campaign, it's a movement, and we discussed the ways in which we develop policies with people to ensure that the economy works for the many and not the few. It was also an important opportunity for us to showcase the pioneering work that's happening on this agenda across the city region, and sometimes we don't publicise some of the great things that we're doing well enough or often enough in the city region. Um, from the rise of community businesses in the north of Liverpool to the work being done on the world to ensure that more public money is being spent by local firms and employers, £10 million is going to go back into the economy because they've taken this approach. In addition, as a combined authority, we have a strategic investment fund with social value embedded into the bidding process we're developing a fair employment charter alongside this with Lynn Collins, who's uh, in the room today, um, collaborating with our businesses and our trade unions to build an economy that's both inclusive and productive. And as I announced yesterday, I was genuinely, again, delighted to, to say this at this meeting um, with CLESS. The launch of the Community Wealth Building Centre of Excellence um, event We've highlighted the fact that we'll be working in a partnership with CLESS and other experts in the field, in particular um, in Barcelona, who have been extremely successful in ensuring communities are at the heart of their local community. And once again, it's us in our city region who are leading in the country on this very important um, social economy aspect of what we're doing um, across our work. And finally, um, along the same veins, on Wednesday, I had the pleasure of visiting Wirral Met College, and um, we funded a four hundred thousand pound high tech energy centre that's now producing eighty percent of the college's electricity. And the energy centre has minimised the college's need to use the national grid because it's recycling um, the energy within the uh, the building. It saved them, they said, a 
potentially about £80,000 a year. But instead of that £80,000 going into something that won't really produce benefit to students, instead they're putting that into sort of pastoral support and um, student care and all that sort of stuff that you really need to give students the best experience whilst they're in a college or a university. Um, I think this will probably be something that's rolled out across the whole country. Um, not only is Wirral leading in the UK, it's the first of its kind in the world and it should be again something that we're very proud of. So all the students who are stu um, studying STEM at the college are also going to benefit from the energy centre's uh, presence because they're going to learn about all of its applications because of course nobody's doing this so if we can train the students they'll be best placed for when this is rolled out this technology is rolled out and they'll be getting jobs of the future that haven't even yet been created so it's a great initiative and it just shows you that the funding that we can put in as a combined authority can go to do some wonderful things and it's not just about buildings um, item five is the deputy portfolio holder appointment um, if members are in approval and that's that we move uh, the order of the agenda so that um, this can be taken higher up on um, our agenda from item 14 and it's because we want to appoint the deputy portfolio holder um, which is councillor ward to become the deputy portfolio holder for low carbon and energy renewal and councillor powell to be the deputy portfolio for culture tourism and the business economy and that's because we've got an item coming up but we would like um, jill to have the opportunity to speak on that as actually the appointed deputy portfolio holder so it's just a bit of housekeeping but if that seeks with your approval very good um, okay uh, item six therefore uh, our first report explains the combined authority related position on the work being undertaken in response to the declaration of a climate emergency. People will remember uh, there was a group who, who came a few cycles ago. Um, I met with um, that a representative group um, from Youth Climate Strike Liverpool following their protests at the combined authority. And as a result of those discussions, we listened carefully to the points that they made. And this report sets out the Command Authority's response to the climate emergency. Uh, I'm very pleased to say that we have a representative of um, that group that I met. And so could I ask, uh, or invite Kate, oh, she's, she's here, Kate to say a few words to us. Hi Kate.
but their homes are now uninhabitable due to rising sea levels as a result of the climate crisis. And that number of climate refugees um, is estimated will be at 140 million by 2040, by 2050 even. Um, and I often think, I struggle with that sometimes to look at the bigger picture, but then you can look at it closer to home, you only have to look outside the window, sure, on the way, all of, on the way here, all of you suffered with the weather. Um, we're currently experiencing a historical heat wave, and the last time we had a heat wave this bad in Europe, it was 2003, and 70,000 people died. Um, the climate crisis is real, the climate crisis is terrifying, and it's deadly. Um, and so, as a scouser, I'm proud to fight the climate crisis on behalf of those who can't so easily um, have their opinions heard, such as people in the global south. Or, in fact, I'm happy to fight the climate crisis on behalf of the people in our city, the people who I've just left school with, for my nephew, and for everybody in this room. Um, the climate, climate emergency means we join the ranks of hundreds of other councils who have declared that they will be fighting back against the crisis. We're publicly announcing our desire to fight for our futures and the future of every single person in this city. So, thank you for listening to me, and um, I'm very glad that the report has been followed through with the climate kind of emergency. I think we might be seeing your back case as a politician at some stage in your um, lifetime. Thanks very much for that. Very articulate and, and very passionate. And we have responded. And that, that's a great thing about what we can do because we have six leaders uh, and myself who listened to what people said and we immediately brought that to the attention of the combined authority and, and we've already acted upon it. With that said, um, can we ask Councillor Polhill, who's the portfolio holder, um, just to say a few words. No, thanks, Joe. Uh, follow that, really. Yeah. I mean, said it all. But I'm going to hand over to my deputy, Jill, who's done a lot of work on this paper, talk us through the paper. Hand over to Jill. Okay. Thanks for that, um, Thank you to Kate for that contribution. Um, and on behalf of Youth Strike for Climate Liverpool, and for the work that you are doing in having pushed this important issue of the political agenda. At the last meeting of the combined authority, the Metro Mayor declared a climate emergency on behalf of the Liverpool City Region. And this declaration demonstrates not only that the, us in this chamber understand the pressing threat of climate change, but also our commitment to take urgent action to address it. This report reflects upon the progress achieved to date in the development of measures and initiatives outlined that contribute to the City Region reducing the carbon and climate impacts and calls upon us to agree to progress to the next stage in developing the Climate Action Plan by December 2019. The report outlines the Liverpool City Region has made lots of good progress since 2017 in tackling climate change and improving air quality, and the combined authority is playing a leading role. Highlighting just some of those things that have been done, we've established an air quality task force to support local authorities in their collective actions to improve air quality, procuring a new fleet of efficient high capacity trains to serve the Merseyrail network, which will be owned by the city region. We also secured 172 million in transforming cities funding to support the development of low carbon, public transport, walking and cycling routes, and also working with the bus operators to ensure that our bus fleets achieve lower emission levels, including the pilot hydrogen fuel cell bus routes across the city region from next year. The next steps and how we go forward with this there's much to be done, and as the report it outlines and makes clear, it cannot be business as usual. That is not a viable or desirable option as we go forward. Indeed, we must make fundamental changes if we are to reach our targets of becoming zero carbon by 2040, and that's a full decade ahead of the national government's target. The key elements of our strategy to decarbonise the city region's energy system include delivering Europe's largest tidal power project by 2030, tripling the volume of energy generated by offshore wind at Liverpool Bay by 2032 and replacing all methane with hydrogen from the city region's gas route by 2035. These are just some of the things that I've highlighted that are in this report and they've all but brief, I've said, um, but they are part of the wider climate action plan for the Liverpool city region. And at this juncture, I'd like to hand back to Rob in order for him to seek recommendation with the CA. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Jill. Um, I think the report says it all, though, in a way, that we are taking action 
and like, it's not just words. And I think in the Liberal City region, we're actually doing more than most are doing this. And as you can see in through the through the paper, that that's what's going on now. So I've no hesitation really of, uh, of moving recommendations. Thanks, Rob. Um, I think Jill, like your made the contribution, wasn't it? So I, I think it pro probably was as a speech, but thanks very much. Um, just to give, I think, Kate some comfort that you will be a passionate advocate for the issues that she's uh, raised today. And I think it's not the last time we'll be hearing you on, on speaking about those particular uh, matters. Um, just to add to what Rob said, we previously um, committed ourselves to be net zero carbon by 2040. So we are ahead of the targets that have been set in regard to um, the government's 2015. We're a full decade ahead and we're going for net zero carbon measures to be 80% um, reduction by 2050. So uh, again, it's something that we should be singing from the, the hilltops really. We are um, leading the way on many of these environmental issues and it's really important because it is a climate emergency. Um, can we therefore agree the recommendations are set out on page 15, please? Item 7 is a report which explains the work that's been undertaken by each of the constituent local authorities to action the Dementia Friendly Pledge, which leaders and I signed um, at the uh, Liverpool City Region Health and Wellbeing Summit, which was back in February 2018. It's an issue that's very close to my heart because my mum unfortunately succumbed uh, to vascular dementia and uh, my office uh, also participated, uh, all the staff in the office participated in dementia awareness training which was both extremely informative and highlighted some of the day to day challenges and those living with dementia face so I'd encourage anybody who hasn't yet done that to, to do it, it really is a genuine eye opener you, you think you know about it because it's in the news, but actually when you see some of the things that people have to overcome, um, it's really quite scary. Um, there are, there's a diff additional information that's been received from St Helens, which we've circulated to members as well on top of what, what's available. Um, and Casey's going to take us through the details of the report. Thank you, yes, so as you said, the um, Command Authority signed up to the Dementia Friendly Pledge in February 2018. Um, and the report provides an update on work to date. Um, the pledge includes commitments from each local authority to have a dementia champion, uh, to work with advocacy groups and engage with voluntary community and faith organisations, as well as engaging with the business community, uh, and an important role in promoting um, dementia awareness and understanding. Uh, the details of some of the work that's been undertaken to date are in the report and in the appendices and the additional information that's been circulated. Um, I'd also highlight some of the other examples of work, for example, um, your own office, which has undertaken the dementia-related uh, training. Uh, but we've also had training for frontline Mersey Travel staff, uh, which is an important step. And through the Bus Alliance, Mersey Travel has also developed driver training module, which covers hidden disabilities, um, which is also relevant. So important steps that have been taken. The report sets out more detail about what's been done to date. Um, and the recommendation is that you note know the contents of the report but also given that this is an area where there is always more to do, um, that you uh, suggest that we come back in a further year with a further update on um, progress that's been made then. Thanks Kirsty. Can we agree the recommendations are set out on page uh, 23 please? Uh, 8 is the uh, Combined Authority Transport Plan and uh, it's for our consideration since so draft plan uh, which was considered by the Transport Committee at their last meeting and they've suggested a number of changes and um, today we've had a number of suggestions as well um, but they um, have been reflected in the draft plan and there will be further iterations in, in the future um, but in regard to um, this particular draft can I ask uh, Councillor Liam Robinson to introduce it please yeah thanks very much I think yeah just following on from, from your points there um, obviously this is a refreshed plan is a new umbrella plan to replace the existing transport plan for growth uh, that we have um, and it's very much to sort of act as a bridge between the statutory transport plans that currently exist for Merseyside and for the district of Halton. 
Uh, this is very much a sort of short to medium term document focusing on the things that we're looking at doing over the next four, uh, three to four years and really will act as a precursor uh, both to the local industrial strategy that's emerging will inform those uh, statutory plans that we look to develop uh, in the mid 2020s. Uh, there's been lots of involvement and I can sort of thank uh, city district colleagues for all their kind of involvement in pulling this together um, and also my colleagues on the transport committee very much appreciate though that um, there is still uh, more iterations that need to be pulled together and we do look forward to uh, the development of a full uh, new mayoral transport plan in the years ahead. Uh, are there any questions for Liam? Um, can we therefore agree the recommendations on page 45 please? Now is um, the proposals for distributing the Highway Pothole Action Fund and uh, you set, uh, the report sets out the repo uh, proposed redistribution of that fund and again Councillor Liam Robertson is going to take us through that. Yeah, obviously um, the report sets out the uh, allocation uh, of the Pothole Action Fund that we've received from the Department of Transport. Uh, I think it's always important to remember that um, what I call a drop in the ocean or kind of path of pebble in a pothole. This goes nowhere near to address the kind of very significant uh, issue that we've got across our highway network locally. And whilst we won't be turning this money down, the report does highlight genuinely the real significant problems we've got with potholes and highway maintenance because we haven't been given the funding allocation that we require from government. Uh, the report does sort of highlight um, how uh, we intend to distribute the funding across the districts and that's very much in line with the existing formula on a pro rata basis. So uh, we won't be turning any money down but I think the key point to always remember is this goes nowhere near the amount that we require from government. Any questions for Liam? Um, again then can we read the recommendations as set out on page 129 please? Ten is um, access for all, and it's a Department of, of Transport Initiative. They've awarded the combined authority a part of the funding that we need towards uh, passenger accessibility improvements to give rail stations and the um, the uh, lifts so that people with disabilities can easily access those stations. Uh, the funding is subject to match funding being provided by us the combined authority and so that's what this report's for but Mark's going to take us briefly through his report. Thank you Chair. As highlighted the, we've received an offer of funding in our, of seven and a half million for accessibility improvements at St Michael's, Hunts Cross, Hillside, Birkenhead Park and Broad Green. The purpose of the report is both to accept that funding and further to note the progress that we are making through the Strategic Investment Fund in providing 7.5 million pounds in March. The hope here is that we deliver these five stations and subject to DFT funding move on to a further shortlist. Thank you. Any questions? Um, Carla? Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to uh, pass a comment on this because obviously it's an issue I'm extremely passionate about. Um, we're looking at this as a new frontier for disability inclusive transport. Mobility constraints are a major obstacle to disability inclusive development as they exacerbate the economic, social and personal isolation of people with disabilities and they tend to push them further into poverty, which is why I'm delighted that these steps are being taken throughout the Liverpool City region to address these challenges. This is being coupled with interventions in other areas Mobility improvements can go a long way in ch uh, changing lives for people with disabilities, for the better. We have to think about transport as an equaliser. It's a cat catalyst that facilitates access to many other sectors. Mobility improvements are key, are key because transport gives you access to jobs, schools, healthcare, markets and leisure. When considering the cost of accessibility, you also need to keep in mind that universal design does not just improve the mobility of people with disabilities, but it brings co-benefits. So things like people, with, uh, people who are elderly, parents who are pushing strollers, and those may be dealing with temporary physical impairments. As a counsellor with disabilities, 
I'm so proud of our representatives who are bringing about real change to ensure that our residents, particularly those with disabilities, know that social inclusion and integration is one of our principal objectives. It is great that we are promoting this and, I wish to, uh, and that we wish to eliminate the barriers for severely disabled people travelling from stopping them from travelling freely. Fortunately, awareness of disability is growing and mentalities are changing because we have a Metro Mayor who champions equality, fairness and social justice. Overall, it has become easier for us to make a case for accessible transport as our, our residents understand that if you create sustainable communities, you need to include everyone. Thank you. Thank you, excellent. Councillor Thompson again. Um, uh, all I have to say is we are doing everything that we possibly can because we haven't got a magic wand and we're still constrained by austerity no matter what people say about well, austerity no longer uh, being a, a governmental policy. It, it, it means that we can't do everything we want to do. But if you have a look at our network and the improvements that we've made and things like the trains that are being introduced with the, the platform uh, interface with the train that's absolutely level, um, we are doing some good stuff. Is it enough? No, and I don't think any of us are going to rest until we have a network that is 100% accessible for all. So that's our, our aim and aspiration, and we're, um, we're doing great stuff to, to get there, but thanks for uh, that contribution. Um, can we therefore agree the recommendations set out um, on pages 139 to 140? Item 11 is um, our strategic investment fund and Mark's going to provide us with um, the first quarterly update on the strategic investment fund um, and Mark, well, I'll hand over to you. Thank you Chair. This report contains the first of regular quarterly updates from now on on the strategic investment fund's performance and prospects. It underlines our need to work together to deliver schemes that are already improved, uh, approved and also the very healthy nature of the SIF Round 2 pipeline. <coughs> Councillor Grucart will now provide a further perspective. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's a pleasure to speak for the first time in this chamber as the Deputy Corporate Holder for Inclusive Growth in the Third Sector. Um, Chair, I welcome this update. The SIF Round 2 pipeline highlights the city region's potential for growth <coughs> and the ambition we have for our residents. These are projects capable of delivering real value to our economy and the wider north. The numbers are significant. The report highlights that the SIF team is engaged with 117 projects, representing over 600 million of investment opportunity. It also makes clear that the combined authority needs sight of greater funding and that government should increase its commitment to devolution of greater financial backing. From a local perspective, I'm pleased to see the development funding to work at the transport solution at Lee Green and St Helens. Uh, I know that pre-development funding is one that's welcomed by all the local authorities. So I encourage the team to keep progressing this pipeline and project for the benefit of the communities across the city region. Uh, thanks, Kate, for the fantastic uh, maiden contribution. Um, and I'm sure, because uh, I know you, yeah, you're going to be a passionate advocate to make certain that the officers that you've just challenged do exactly what you've um, challenged them with. So thanks very much um, for that. The, uh, Appendix 1 to that report um, is exempt due to the information related to the financial or business affairs of a person. And therefore, if anyone wishes to discuss the content of the appendix, then Jill will guide us through what we need to do. If we're not, um, are there any other questions? Uh, before we go on to agree the report, just so that I don't have to repeat that in the next item, it's a save with appendices five, uh, two to five on the next item, on item 12, if we can take that as read as well. So um, if there aren't any questions, can we agree the recommendations are set out on page 145, please? Item 12 is um, SIF again, it's uh, a loan and grant to Sandon Global Engraving Technology and Mark's going to take us through that again. 
Thank you, Chair. This report concerns a two million pound funding package for sand and engineering provided to support business expansion. Can I please note the very high value for money gained on this project because the funding we provide is in large part repayable. Again, Councillor Grucut will take us through uh, the, the report in, in, with, further, with further commentary. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is an excellent first project for SIFT Round 2, a local success story that can push further into international markets from its base in Halton here in the city region. Added to that, a commitment to innovation, partnership with the local university and a successful apprenticeship programme all add to the positive views in this report. I'm also pleased to see the combined authority provide an element of repayable funding. This will allow the funds to be returned and invested uh, for further growth in the particular year's time. Thank you. I said we'll be hearing from you shortly. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other questions? Um, yeah, Rob? Chair, I'd just like to welcome the report. I mean, it's tremendous news this for the city of Eden. It also cements the company's presence in the city of Eden. And it brings with it 60 high value jobs again for the city of Eden. So I welcome this report. And so again, it's a good news story, isn't it, for us all? Um, let's see if anybody covers it any other than on the, the webcast. Can we therefore agree the recommendations are set out on page 145, please? Um, item, sorry, that was uh, 163, page 163. Can it just mix um, it and we get that right? Because it have a legal officer on, on my left. Can we uh, agree the recommendations as set out on page 163, please? <laughs> um, item 13 is again a SIF um, update and another good news story. The report seeks our approval for increased funding of £6.5 million pounds towards the Shakespeare North Playhouse. And again, the appendices 1 to 3 are exempt due to the information relating to the financial or business affairs of a person. Therefore, if we want to talk about them, um, the, the content, um, Jill will guide us through what we need to do. Um, but I don't think we do, so um, can we therefore invite Mark to introduce the report, please? Thank you, Chair. Yes, this is the return of the Shakespeare North Playhouse project, uh, with changes this time to accommodate uh, an increase in costs on the one hand, and on the other, a change in the funding structure. I note that the Council has also increased its contributions of this project to a very meaningful level, uh, and as we increase our, our, our commitment from 6.5 to, to 10.55 million pounds, and then that it still represents a strategically important project with the capability of delivering value for money. Any questions? Councillor Lauren. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this additional funding is a fantastic boost for the Shakespeare North Playhouse in Prescott. The Playhouse will transform the cultural landscape of Knowsley and the wider Liverpool city region. It will become a major visitor attraction for Northern England, a jewel in the crown, bringing people from across the globe to our city region. This is a wonderful opportunity for Knowsley to show itself as a hub of culture, creativity and imagination. The landmark project allows our residents to be proud of the borough's heritage as well as being excited about its future. By investing in the Shakespeare North Playhouse, the combined authority, Knowsley Council and our other partners are showing our commitment to revitalising town centres and driving inclusive growth across our communities. The project is already having a positive impact on Prescott. Exciting new restaurants, hotels and cafes are choosing Knowsley as a vibrant place to do business and create jobs. This, this, this additional funding Mr Mayor will help make Shakespeare North Playhouse and all its current and benef future benefits a reality for us all. Can I welcome the recommendations in this report? Thanks Graham. Um, we visited the site the other day and we were saying that you can start to see that it's physically transforming the piles they're in. Um, some of the enabling works are taking place. Um, starting to excavate. It's really exciting. Um, there's nowhere like this in the north. Um, so it will become a major tourist attraction for the whole city region and um, we've got great hopes for the future um, and apparently Graham is going to be the first to do a, 
Shakespeare's soliloquy um, on the opening night. Um, didn't know about it until just now, but it's in the minutes now, the next time. So, uh, can we agree oh, no, Julian. <laughs> <laughs> can we agree the recommendations uh, set out on page uh, 231, please? 14 is um, the combined authority financial performance and this report sets out the authority's outturn position for the financial year 2018-19 and also provides an update on the performance against the treasury management strategy. Um, John's going to take us through this. It is quite technical but I think what we'll do is probably uh, allow anybody to uh, ask any questions rather than to go through um, tables and charts and um, all sorts of stuff that probably will go over most people's heads. Um, John. Uh, yes, thank you for that, Chair. Uh, yeah, it, it's a backward looking report. It's last year's financial return. Um, I would suggest that the key information is probably contained in tables one and tables three, and table three on the revenue side, and table four, which is capital effectively for the combined authorities, is largely the, um, the, the SIF program which you've already heard. Uh, a, a, a more up-to-date update in um, a previous item. I'm happy to take any questions on that. The Treasury management is obviously quite technical, that's also a very important element of, of, of what we need to report at this time of year. So I'm happy to take any questions uh, now or um, subsequently. A any immediate questions? No? Can we um, therefore agree the recommendations are set out on page 277, please? Um, before we move on to the next item, um, to allow the armed forces um, personnel into the chamber, here they, they come. Um, can we welcome Lieutenant Commander Ian King from HMS Eaglet, Major. Major Grade Dowling of 156 Regiment RCL and Standard Bearers, as you just heard, uh, who each represent one of the local authority areas at today's meeting. Um, that here, as we consider the annual review of the work undertaken across the local city region to support our forces personnel following the signing of the city region's armed forces covenant back in September 2017. And I'd like to personally thank all the local authorities, and it has to be said, the staff here, and especially at Oliver Martins, um, for the continued support of the armed forces um, and the covenants, um, and the activities, more importantly, that underpin what we put in that covenant, that ensure that the armed forces personnel and their families are treated fairly across the city region. Um, I know that I've been to an event already this week and there have been a, a number of them, but the main Armed Forces Day is tomorrow and I hope that people, wherever possible, attend those celebrations and commemorations, of course, of the fantastic work our Armed Forces do to keep this country and us safe. Um, are there any questions or anything that anybody would like to add? Robert? So I, I echo what you're saying there. These are tremendous, tremendous people. Um, and we owe an awful lot to our veterans, etc. And I think it just, you know, people are young people now, uh, young families, uh, their parents have been involved with the modern day conflicts, if you like, that's bringing it home. So it's not just World War I, World War II. These people do an extremely good job. And I think in some part they've been let down by their governments. Just don't forget the freedom that they got the government to do what they're doing was these veterans that fought for that freedom. And uh, only for these people bring it to the attention of